Okay, in this video we are going to cover how to download your first set of much anticipated leads and what to look for in the data that we provide. So you're going to go to alltheleads.com and under subscriber access look for subscriber downloads. When you get into subscriber downloads you'll see an archive of all of your leads. If it's your first month you'll obviously just see your first month. Um, so let's just click on my latest month and you'll see that it downloads immediately in a CSV file which is Microsoft Excel and so let's open the file and take a look at the data that we get so this is the raw data file now you'll notice in my market we do not get attorney information so you're gonna have more likely than not you'll have all these cells filled out where I actually don't because I'm in a commonwealth so I'm just going to go across here. So the deceased key is honestly irrelevant. It's, it's not anything you're going to use. Um, the deceased name pulled. This is the name of the person who passed away. And you probably aren't going to use this much. Other than Actually, there's one field that uh, in the options letter that pulls this from a mail merge. It says, uh, you know, I understand you represent the estate of the deceased name. Uh, the probate county is the county it was gathered, the state docket number. This is useful if you're marketing to attorneys, if you want to reference the docket number just to make sure that you get past the gatekeeper and say I'm referencing the estate of docket number, yada yada. The probate date is the date that the family member actually visited the courthouse and filed probate. The date of death is the date the person actually passed away. And you're going to notice, like, here's one example from November of 2009, and they just now filed probate. So different families grieve in different ways and handle things at, at different speeds. Here's one from almost a year ago. They just filed probate. And then there's others where it's almost immediate. So this one's 12 days. Uh, on average, it's about two months between the date of probate filing and the date of death. Uh, deceased prefix, I assume this is for junior, senior. Uh, deceased first name, middle name, last name. I think this is actually the fields that the mail merge would pull from. And deceased last address. Now, this is something that most folks who are just getting started give a, have a little bit of a, a misconception about what this can be. So if you notice ones like this one and this one and this one, so deceased last address is, is not always going to be the subject property, the one that, that you're trying to list or buy. So just keep that in mind. Um, don't think that, that it has to be at 3706 Knoll Ridge Road because this could be a nursing home. It could be an apartment. It could be a family member's home. So this is not as relevant as most people think it is. Um, so this is the deceased last address city state zip. Now the most relevant information that we give you is the PR or personal representative which is also known as the executor in most states. The PR first name, middle name, last is going to be the name that this is the person you're mailing to, talking to. Um, this is that person's mailing address. So the personal representative's mailing address is definitely a valid and current address. And this is going to be where you send your letters to. So the PR address city state zip, this is where, you know, this will be on the front of the envelope. Um, the phone numbers, a lot of times we'll get three phone numbers, sometimes even more. So personal representative phone one, phone two, and phone three. We do have a bit of a scoring system, so you'll see phone one is going to have a better chance of, of you reaching that person than phone three, but you should call all of them. Um, more often than not, your one of these three will reach the personal representative. And as I said in the beginning of the video, the attorney, uh, all the attorney information, first medal, last name, office address, phone number. All this will be filled out for most subscribers. For me, I don't actually get this data. So we'll just recap. Um, what's going to be most relevant will be the personal representative, first, middle, last name, their mailing address, city and state, and zip code, and then their phone numbers. This is the person you're marketing to. 
All of this other, other information is, is fine for reference as far as the date of the death, the date of the probate filing, the deceased name, and their last known address. That stuff, it's not totally irrelevant, but it's not anything that you want to lead with in the conversation. So what's really important is that you contact the personal representative at, at, you know, at the right address and the right phone number and just start the conversation. Just find out, is there a property in the estate that you would like to sell? What's the motivation? What, and, you know, and, and then that's our job is to you know, understand the situation and provide value. So this is really columns R through AB on this sheet. All the personal representative's information is going to be the most valuable information that we give. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can always email us at support at all the lead dot com and we can help you help you understand the information. Um, you can also get reach us by going to contact us on the website.